let's wait for a few more seconds. I think <clears throat> it's green and online on all platforms. So good afternoon, good Friday, good weekend, if uh, that's already the case for you. So I will continue the work from two weeks ago. I was investigating particle systems. I think they are called particles in Godot. Um, so we were looking at, uh, we'll probably get a bunch of errors. I was doing some folder restructuring. So all is to simulate snow over this house and uh, right now it looks like it's raining we'll switch it to the snow particles and we'll let it snow ultimate goal is to simulate something like this um would like to have snow coming down if you look at the, this tree trunk you're going to see that actually let's pause so there's vertical um movement but sometimes there's wind picking up and blowing the snow on rooftops in different directions so what is also happening here is that there's a general wind direction coming from uh, this this direction so it's blowing uh, the falling snow in this direction there is gravity pulling the snow down there's the occasional um, wind possibly hitting this surface and blowing some of the snow kind of like a re reaction and it's bouncing off like it's not really bouncing off but if i run the video you'll see so there's a general wind direction and then there is this um sort of turbulence here um so we have three different effects there and this is Probably the ultimate case, creating this blizzard. Uh, otherwise, we will have um, much calmer snow conditions. Generally, this is like the extreme case. If we can simulate all these three factors, um, it's going to be good. So maybe we'll do it with uh, multiple particles. We'll see. The second major goal stream after we are done with this uh, the snow is coming down okay particles fine but then they are those particles will disappear so the ultimate goal on the music a bit the ultimate goal is to have this snow accumulate on Flat surfaces, of course. Uh, by flat, what I mean is looking at this vertical structure here, it's gonna accumulate uh, first on the flat sides that are facing uh, up rather than the sides. You know, you see that uh, with the tree, instead of having all this like snow all around the tree uh, bark trunk you have it on the flatter surfaces so we need to figure out the exposed areas however over time also depending on the wind direction you will have edges uh, grabbing it's like ambient occlusion where the, the surfaces are making uh, corners and edges we should have uh, snow accumulation so generally uh, there's this sort of like ball shape that's like there's uh, can see it here there's uh, another building here and uh, where the building meets the ground uh, there's a bit of snow accumulates however on this particular day uh, there was more snow accumulated in this direction because this building was blocking the wind so there is always like one one favored edge or corner with the snow. Uh, we will figure all those things out in this second section. I'm not sure how long I will stream today. Possibly four or five hours. Um, 
this is the main goal if you could start this uh it's okay but uh i don't really think we'll get there and the first ban of the day in the chat is i'm going to say their name okay. so the chat gets posted um some funny bizarre links don't click them i and to block those people <coughs> or bots okay so hmm. i better fix this because i think uh, i'm going to have this every time yeah so let's close godot i did some uh folder structuring Okay, that uh, funny error is gone. Yeah, okay. I kind of remember this uh, sport consolidator. One of the um, models had um, post import um, post import script attached. Most likely tomato or trellis. More likely, yes. Custom script, scripts, tools, export. That actually exists. The path might not be correct because. Uh, Scripts tools export console it's tools. Yeah. I think what Godot is confused about is uh, this folder name is now title case. It used to be all four case. I think it's that. Let's choose it again. Re import. You know, this is actually no longer important. So I'm going to do a full reimport. It's gone. So um, that other thing is about uh, easy charts uh, plugin. But as far as going back and forth, that reimport thing is no longer. Um, this rain was part of the environment scene. I recall. I think I'm going to separate those into their uh, not into their own uh, scene, but I'm going to grab those two and I think I'll make those two things as part of virtual effects scene. New 3D scene. This could stay spatial because all we need is a position data for this. Save this. Um, there's something here, but uh, this is uh, this was an attempt made for uh, simulating uh, planting, watering actions over a trellis. I think this has to be reworked. Uh, let's just call it here, uh, like v, uh, VFX. Uh, there's a lot of work here. Uh, okay. I think starting at 3.3, although we could uh, copy notes, we could even cut them, I think paste into another scene, which is a big time saver. That's done. So now environment is no longer particles, so you don't see it raining. Need to put a uh, fix here. You can work the VFX uh, in this separate scene. now. I'm not going to bother with rain today. This has its own uh, script, okay. 
first of all, is this, yeah, this is also. This is something that I'm curious about, how to just all this. Let's see what's changing here. Just the particles. This is something that is, I see. It almost looks like a capsule that is, uh, yeah, uh, the radius and height has been changed. Standard. Uh, which is assigned a snow uh, material. Beans, VFX. So there is something after all. Yeah, those four other four were the scenes. This is the resource for the. Let's see. Yeah, this is. Uh, this is basically the bonding box. This AABB. Uh, I was looking for extents. I think in uh, global illumination probe uh, or some other structures like this. Um, you adjust the dimensions, there's an extents portion here. Um, we'll look into this. So this is all in all particles. So what I'm also going to do is um, we'll just arbitrarily type particle to see if uh, we have other choices. I don't think we want to go with the CPU based. But I'm Curious, what is the difference? Yeah, as I keep saying, it's search could use a lot of it. Wasn't bringing it up when it was together, now. Kind of, we do it separately, but below. Yeah, we will definitely use the other one. Read a bit. So we definitely need particles material. Going to be here, so let's uh, this material. <clears throat> but this is just like uh, normal material, except uh, wow, it's going to sound a bit redundant, but particles material, which uh, comes with its own set of variables or settings. The difference between this one. And the normal material is basically kind of like telling myself what the difference is, but uh, for uh, people who are learning Godot, this is also mini, mini, mini tutorial. When you look at the spatial material, you have all these settings. This is defining the color, the general color, and then you adjust the reflect Reflect, uh, reflectivity, that kind of thing, specularity, metallic aspect, all that stuff, right? This is how a material will look, in essence. This guy is pretty much the same thing. Because this is still using the GPU to 
create a surface except under normal conditions the uh, spatial materials are applied to larger surfaces so you get to see those reflective properties whether a surface looks rough or shiny that kind of thing it's pretty much the same thing except uh, for a particle it needs to appear on the screen you know live some time and then goes away and then maybe like the direction of the particle going away that kind of thing. you adjust a lot of things that uh, show the particle or that create that shading for you and then it just goes away so this has its own kind of lifetime properties the angle we'll look into this uh, to simulate the wind condition like how it starts uh, the velocity how it ends that sort of thing uh, I believe if you reverse this you could create particles that start here but go up sort of like a fountain spray like a hose spraying water so we could create really uh, interesting particle systems hey man I'm okay how are you decided to have a late afternoon uh, Friday stream by the way looking at your timeline yeah, I'm wondering if the chat messages are coming in a little bit late or I didn't see it. Not gravity. I was saying gravity for the... It's shooting up. And you're saying that's done with velocity. Maybe. No, but you, you adjust this as a like a... Kind of a field. What was it in Maya? There were there were fields, some wind object and such, some attractor. I think there was something like that. It's, uh, it's emit snow. Let's get started. I think these are looking a little bit uh, dark. doesn't look too white to me but we have some particles yeah what I mean is if you change the gravity in the y direction it's gonna start uh, not snowing down but snowing up I'm not really interested in the velocity yet but it's just an idea sort of weird things let's see to uh, minus 10 it's already minus I might be absolutely wrong of course no but see I was right it's going up let's slow it down a bit <laughs> yeah I see so I see it going uh, up yeah, you are right about gravity having a constant uh, force. They start, there's this initial velocity, so they actually tend to go five down. And then uh, this is uh, counteracting. If we could have these particles uh, This is a new territory for me to make the particles look bigger for testing purposes. But I think uh, you guys can see it, right? We increase the... The amount 1000. Start, uh, it starts to go down and then gravity kicks in. Let's uh, stop this area. Yeah. 
So it's actually uh, reverse now. <laughs> yeah, it accelerates. It's the acceleration. This. It's looking funky. Snowing backwards. First, uh, first things first. Is this going to look gray in? Uh, let's add uh, the effects into this environment. And then game is it. I see the particles casting. Uh... So usually you want just stability vector, maybe to figure it out, slow down. Yeah. Let's do the color first, and then I'll uh, play with the velocities. There's actually a whole other uh, layer here. This is what I'm trying to simulate. So there are three factors here. There is the constant wind coming from this direction. And sometimes that wind uh, blows up the uh, snow that is on this rooftop. So that snow is disturbed. Or this pile here is disturbed, so it's sort of blown in wild directions here, like a turbulence. There's just this direction, there's occasional disturbance, and there is the snow falling down the gravity. You look at the tree uh, trunk, you see the snow coming down to you. Some crazy thing like this. But I may um, have random uh, velocity there. I think yeah, there was some option. Velocity randomness, this is it. So this is going to simulate that sort of uh, fluctuation. There's also acceleration and the randomness in the exit. This is something that I will most likely use radial acceleration. So we create that sort of, uh, not always going down, but in uh, sort of weird directions. This I have no idea what it like I know the word but I don't know the implication. See? Perpendicular to the particles velocity giving the Oh, maybe this is what we'll use. This is like the normals. Okay. Accelerate away from origin. Oh, gotcha. So this actually covers uh, kind of like the three axes. Could go in this direction. This is uh, away from origin. And this is sort of away from the origin too, but a normal to this. So. Yeah, so... I might even create two particles, uh, two areas there. But if possible, I'll just stick with one. And of course, all this has to be attached to the weather uh, crazy stuff that I've been working on. If the forecast is uh, crazy that day, yeah, and accordingly now. Let me check my uh, transforms here. Uh, everything seems to be zero. Environment zero. Ah, there you go. These particles. Did I actually move this? You know what's wrong here?
So when I did this, I see this is where the drawing is going to happen, but the origin is still here. Which is, I see, this is the problem. This is not zero again. And then, ideally, this should be zero. So we only, uh, Uh, I'm a bit iffy about this, but let's not use the local coordinates. Why don't I be high performance too if we tweak one thing to all? Yeah, it could be. So I'll, I'll, I'll probably spend the rest of today uh, this. Uh, that's enough for today. We have a, a decent looking snow effect. Maybe I'll work on the shaders too. Um, yeah, but then it's flat because this is the height. So we, we need to have some height. Thing is, this has to be kind of calculated dynamically based on the map, based on the level. This is the person's house. Well, maybe not dynamically, but large enough to cover the uh, the camera angles, which is something that I'm still deciding. Uh, most likely, we'll have a camera angle like this. Not planning to show the horizon at all because that's a whole mess. Like I don't want I, because the further we look or the further away we can look, the more of the neighborhood I have to put in here. If it's too top down, there isn't enough to look at. Gameplay area is important. So we'll see. Um, more importantly, there is some stuff here. What is this? Ah, that's just the starting conditions. And my question is, why are you minus 25? Kind of happen to be half of this okay let's say this is all 50 maybe too much five meters 30 meters is fine okay. let's start with this and then uh, let's change the gravity back to uh, normal madness this which means one of us here actually has uh, set this to zero because this was zero at the beginning of the stream. Which means they made a false assumption by setting this to zero and probably fucking up all the rest here. Set y to minus time to get the cloud on top. Cloud on top? <laughs> I think you mean say, set y to minus... 10. Did you mean the Y here or here? I think you meant. <laughs> Is it snowing? Gravity is the normal default system. The thing is, they actually chose other values based on Gravity being zero, but this is the this is the default according to uh, good. I think Unity has it uh, minus nine point eight two. Where's the snow? You know what's happening? Ah, I see it. I think I know exactly what's happening. Yeah. 
it's snowing in a very um I see. So when I look into this uh, volume, I see the snow coming down. But I, when I look from here, I don't see anything. <coughs> Do we have a normals issue? Visibility A, B. That you meant minus 10 for. We'll pull it down. That still doesn't change this uh, normals effect, though. Still looking. Still looks like it's uh, snowing, sort of. The camera angle will be here, so. Messed up something here, I guess. The volume doesn't define the limits. This looks like um, the, the shader normals are... Uh, this, this is the camera angle. Why up? This. So this is the problem. Like when I uh, flip the camera, seeing the snow, it should be the other way around. I should be seeing it here. Uh, this is actually zero. I want to zero this to the ground. The height. So if this is the material, there's something uh, funny here. Let's not worry about velocities. Let's look at uh, let's see. When in camera angle, you barely see me since they. Okay, but I'm going to save this and go here. So, how is it that I get to see it when I'm looking, when the camera is facing up? Doesn't make sense. So this is the scene that imports this one. Okay, so it's actually okay here. In in the environment scene, which imports VFX, everything is cool. Then something gets uh, horribly wrong here. And I think I kind of know what's going wrong here. This has its own script, which is probably running something in on ready. Which is probably fucking this one up. Uh, it can't because I decoupled it. But this has its own script. And this probably has this. Let's look here. This looks cool to me. This is fine. If I make some changes here, I will uh, see it. Let's uh, change uh, velocity randomness. Let's uh, go crazy. Maybe let's not f with that. Maybe let's do this. Zoom out far and see how snow is.
Okay, I'm trying to catch up. Match the match your uh, writings to what I'm seeing right now. Online wise, we are at the pi hour. 15, 14. You think 15 o'clock is three in the afternoon? Come out like this. So from what I'm seeing and based on your description, because the particles are generated here, they tend to go below that level. So they still occupy this much volume starting at this uh, point. They tend to go down like this. And if that's the case, if this is actually here, then we cannot see shit because everything is happening below this uh, it colored surface. So if only this ground part of Dave's backyard if only this didn't exist then we would actually see it. Yeah, it's underground. So that being said can go about it two ways. And we simulate that here first. How far the flex ball should be lifetime? Yeah, that's actually here. I think what I'm going to do is uh, like, yeah, this has to be up here. So let's move this 30 up. Which is uh, here. Then I will reverse this uh, to zero. Say, uh, sorry, minus 30. And now, now everything looks okay. Now it's starting here. Still filling this volume, but the, since the volume is below this uh, origin point, trying to fill that area. Now, if you go to game, you should actually see stuff. Uh, stuff is coming down. Make the volume thin and high as a cloud. Why? I, I want to use that volume so it actually snows in that volume. I'm not sure why I should make it thin. The volume support. The volume is um the 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 volume is going to show one thousand particles according to our city. This uh, amount of particles is going to occupy this volume for 10 seconds that's what it means so it's a like it's a distribution function so um, yeah the amount of time each particle will exist what purpose does the volume go so the volume in this case, it has to be, uh, if you consider the, the, the rest of this neighborhood, like one or two houses here, four houses here, maybe a street. As far as the camera angle goes, the volume has to be large enough that we should believe that it's actually raining or snowing in this city not just over this house so the volume should be large enough but not too large to cover an infinite amount of space so you would want to 
particles is more higher. This is where we know where they are going to spawn up. That's why I had to reverse this uh, 30 to minus 30. Turns out um, there is an origin point. And then this is a. So this is defining the uh, how far down it goes from this origin point. If this is in the positives, then the volume is up. And we have weird cases like um, it kind of checked out in my mind. It's hard to describe it, but uh, we gotta put this origin point. Uh, right now, that origin point is somewhere here. Actually, in fact, it's here. You can actually see the particles uh, gizmo. This is where the snow originator is, and I uh, put the volume, let's say I define the volume, and I put the particle emitter right above the surface here. So those uh, snow part particles are originated uh, as long as they follow this vertical direction to fill this volume which creates this uh, snow effect in its uh, neighborhood. This is really what uh, we want, actually. Now we can fuss with the uh, speed, the angle, and all this stuff. It might actually just spawn particles on one face of the volume. They do not follow the volume. Well, we could test it. Uh, I mean, I could shift where the volume is. I will actually uh, move the X to... Let's actually change this to 50. So, this was... This axis is right above the house. house so... I'm thinking this is going to show something wonky. Or not. Let's see. Ah, I think I'm understanding what you're saying. They uh, do fall. They were not affected where that box was because I put the box uh, starting from this corner to occupy this area and yet so based on this a new information There's something interesting in, in that note section. It's about the shadows. Visibility. Because you are right, no matter what I did here, let me look at that. Uh, there is no volume information in the particles uh, material. There's only direction. The only volume information is in the particles. Which is just the visibility. I'm calling it volume because it feels like volume. However, regardless of where this thing is, it still considers the emitter as its uh, sort of like origin and it draws the volume based on that center but not in a random fashion it still respects sort of this i think it ignores this xyz 
but the WHD is okay because it's as if uh, the, the, the XYZ is still centered, kind of. Because when I look here, it's perfectly centered. The, the volume has been occlusion. Yeah, it, it, I think it has implications in the rendering. Because I do see the shadows uh, on the ground. Look. I think what, what that volume does is, if I don't see the particle coming down, but if its shadow is going to be cast here, whether I'm, I'm seeing it or not, whether it's part of the volume or not, I think maybe it has that kind of thing. Yeah, so that origin wasn't actually yeah, defining. Uh, wow. Moving the volume around, I think, yeah, it has this shadow implication, but or essentially the particle emitter is uh, crucial. And the volume is sort of readjusted because here I get to see this. Cool. The volume defines if the camera should. Yeah. Remove camera and particles just disappear. Yeah, I, I think that might be it. Although, in my case, I don't think it will matter. But I think the, the example I gave is maybe a good use case. Like when I turn the camera this way, obviously there are particles coming down. I don't get to see them. But what if the sound's direction was so that right now these uh, shadows that we see are like the sun is kind of above? Is it? Let me see. It's actually kind of from this direction based on this shadow coming from here. So my question is, when the camera is here, there are particles of camera. Should I see their shadow or not? It is maybe doing that. But I'm not going to worry about that because uh, yeah, it's GPU shade shaders efficient enough in my, right now. So volume should be as big as the particles should be. Turn the camera around, look for it. Over the road, you mean this way? We're coming down. You know, this may very well be a bug. <laughs> uh, Godot has some weird bugs like this. Even though the emitter is here and the, the volume that we define is here, it's as if this volume is sort of repositioned just so it's centered here. That's actually how it really like. Like normally, according to the volume, we shouldn't have any particles to come. We should have everything from here to this direction. That's how I set it up. We shouldn't have any snow past this, just to the left of this uh, red line and just below this blue line. Have anything. And yet we do. Yeah. The particle system origin of screen. Some of. So you suspect that it will render the particles as long as the volume is on. Hmm. But the thing is, when you move it, it moves the volume too. So what you, then what you're going to suggest is 
Let it be like this. Z. The uh, something like this. Yeah. So the emitter is here, but the volume is here. Whatever. I think this is what I was saying. It's going to, even though the volume is here, it's going to snap this volume to meter, which is somewhere here. Then what you are saying is, is if the camera thinks it's off screen, is it going to render it? It doesn't seem to be rendered. Did I just fucking lose it? Let's see. Let's go with the proper uh, 50. It should be 250. I pushed this too far. Okay. Let's do a hundred. Oops. Sorry. Let's go here. Let's look at the grid. One, two, three ish. One, two, three. So the particles should be here. Yeah, they uh, stop being rendered. What if um, they they have some kind of a uh, error checking like whether the particles is part of the well the emitter itself is part of the volume right now it's not there's maybe some kind of proximity check because right now yeah nothing is happening what I'm going to do is this which is sort of weird but like let's imagine this case. Uh, this is something I uh, used to say to my parents when I was a kid, and they were laughing at me. Uh, I stood corrected though years later. They laughed at me, but they were wrong. I would say something like, uh, so kid, what happened today at school? And I would say, well, it uh, rained in our school today. And they would laugh at me as if like my school was only the only place in, in the city that actually got. Although that turned out to be true years later. It, 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 something like that happened to them. Anyway, jokes aside, here's what I'm going to simulate. What if Dave is happily living in his little house, he's minding his own fucking gardening business, it just happens that, uh, oh shit, it's actually snowing here. This is actually kind of what I want to simulate anyway. But based on the assumption that nothing was being rendered, in fact, something is being rendered. So I was going to say, what if in this part of the city we have snow? And this is like how the gameplay goes. What if Dave is sort of traveling? Dave is actually going this way. Is Dave going to experience snow? He's going to experience snow. What happens? Okay, so, okay, there. It's kind of finicky. Like, wait a minute. Is this about that rendering the... Uh, Occlusion. All of a sudden, uh, uh, 
Oh, I know what's happening. This volume that we are defining, if the camera, when the camera is ray casting, if it actually uh, touches anything in this volume, then it actually. Uh, I'm going to get out of the camera. On like the, yeah. So this this is where the camera box. Uh, sorry, the particle volume is. As soon as uh, I. Yeah. This last bit. Just get out of it. I don't see the particles. Mystery salt. So when the volume is, uh, when the camera is uh, ray casting, and if it doesn't hit the volume, no particles. That is what you said before. It took me this long to understand. <laughs> If the volume or the origin defines the, yeah, we now know that the volume is controlling the occlusion, whether the particles are emitting or not. Um, you are asking another question, which is uh, whether the origin is also. Now, all this is nice. We just learned something interesting. However, I don't think it really matters in my case. Because there is no travel in, uh, in this game. There's only rotation and sort of moving left or right in your uh, garden area. There's a very confined area. It's like Sims in that sense, but it's only your house. So we will most likely just turn on the emitter itself. And off. Instead of... Um, yeah, this will prevent, uh, prevent it from emitting. However, if this was on, and if the camera is not... Uh, hitting the volume, it would automatically occlude it. That's what we discovered. Uh, you probably won't need it. So that concludes, yeah, some have put the particle system on the player. Yeah, like, yeah, it makes things. <laughs> so yeah, this is a nice discovery. Um, as far as usefulness goes, uh, I don't really see any way to implement, like to introduce any gameplay element, uh, but now we Knowing things is good. Let's uh, fix things. So probably zero, zero. We'll change this to uh, zero as well. This is 30. Compensate for that 25, 25. This was actually minus 5. Uh, we'll see if this box is large enough. This now, on to more uh, usually complicated things like. just uh, stare at this for a minute or two. If you put it on player, the size of volume doesn't matter. No, of course it doesn't, because you'll always see it, yeah. It's not that kind of game anyway. It's more like a I mean, there isn't even going to be a player. It's a, kind of a business management simulation thing. You are seeing your yard, you are clicking things. Um, you will rotate around your garden, of course. So that volume will never be... There will never be a case where... Let me negate that negative sentence. You will always be hitting the volume with the camera. There is no need to occlude it by 
There's no edge case like that. Of course, you can get away with putting the system on a on the camera. Mm, we'll see. Yeah. But see, this is a much more challenging exercise. Right? <laughs> uh, this game has a bit of a uh, sort of a uh, flat colors, this cartoonish style. Um, staying loyal to that uh, mystic choice, fading uh, weather effects like this. That's more concerning right now. By the way, this is my backyard, pretty much uh, this week. How is the weather over there? Oh, also, if uh, people are watching this stream later, when it's uh, aired and you're watching it uh, recorded, it's still type where you are from and uh, the weather conditions. Maybe uh, you'll also simulate those cases too. Dynamic snow. That's actually what I'm trying to do. Dynamic snow. Snow melted away today. You know what I'm also thinking? Uh, I, I came across a bunch of videos. Uh, Boris Johnson was uh, roasted in uh, Parliament. People were giving him a hard time. And uh, I thought, yeah, I think under all that pressure he might melt, but he was still uh, smiling like a goof. I'm not really agreeing or disagreeing with uh, each party saying what. I don't care about that. But uh, after all, the, all those accusations, looking at someone and that smile is like... I don't know what you did, buddy, but that smile doesn't give me confidence. <laughs> yeah. I think there was some partying. The police are investigating it, something. I don't quite know. I thought it's the same bullshit everywhere. It's like... Probably caught red-handed. He's just going to smile it off. And just business as usual. Okay, so this is three layers. One is um, coming down part. We kind of did. That could still be uh, diversified with your overlay project. Oh yeah, that uh, animated emotes. Uh, the Twitch bot stuff, right? People's uh, faces were uh, overlaid. I recall there was something about the API and the point system. Hmm. You know about GIF uh, alpha, I think there are two types of alpha, whether this is important to you or not. Um, I'm guessing you are doing something with the code, understanding the alpha channels in GIF. Um, let's create a basic case here. There is index transparency and alpha transparency. And although they kind of achieve the same visual effect, technically they are not the same. I think in index transparency, you choose one color to be transparent and in this works like green screen. Uh, and this is below a threshold, I think it considers some things like sort of taken out. There are some technical specs about this too. Yeah, 
Yeah, with the index, you designate one color to be the alpha, so that is. So I think alpha, although index transparency gives the alpha result, there's also the like uh, alpha transparency alpha. Weirdly named. I don't hundred percent know the technical. Uh, like I did, I have I haven't written a parser. I'm only interpreting it based on. Uh, Minimal technical documentation and sort of working it out in the image processing application. Yeah. Yeah, you need to do, I think you need to do some image processing there, right? Yeah, the parser is hard. Well, let's just quickly look at it and then I'll go back to uh, no. if index transfer actually years ago if uh, maybe if I actually find it it'll give you some uh, insight Yeah, I think something like this might help you. I don't know if you came across documents like this, but uh, they break down the whole like header and the whole uh, structure. Something like this always helped me out in the writing parts. Maybe a. Uh, And of course, yeah, you have to convert it to a texture to the Unity. Yeah. So yeah, it is definitely. Uh, I might be using the wrong name. I, I might be using the Godot analogy, but uh, you know, there's like integer array. There's like. It's, uh, bit arrays, bitmap arrays. There was something about that. Yeah, it's binary data and a whole bunch of uh... good old Wikipedia. So something like this maybe. Yeah. You have all the pieces, yeah. It's a lot of work though, I, I told you. That's pretty much what I've been doing with the weather stuff, like uh, a lot of hard work has to be done. End of image data block. Transparent bit, not used in it. Yeah, the specs are out there and just can't get it in the place I need to. I have a question. Uh, why give uh, PNG also has transparency, but maybe your source is GIF. Not that I think G PNG processing is easier than GIF, but maybe it is. I have no idea. Download it from Twitch, tell them. Twitch, smart enough. Provide uh, PNG support, please. You know what actually surprised me? Uh, TIFF is an interesting format. Yeah. 
if overlay downloads the image gets it all set up this is an interesting format this is sort of like a zip of images it surprised me i wasn't i always thought it was a single image but it wasn't this is a very interesting format I think it is this. There's also Targa, but I, that's a whole other mess. Yeah, multiple subfiles. It's sort of like a zip of images. This is an interesting concept. Because I always wondered why some uh, institutions insisted on using uh, if the container, yeah. Yeah, not much. Not really. So yeah, you have an interesting problem there with the dynamic uh, stuff. Wish you good luck and patience and time to sort it out. All emotes. Yeah. Right, some of them are animated. So on the animated ones, I'm just brainstorming right now. For a still image, for a single frame GIF, if you're able to detect the alpha, you gotta take the animated GIF and consider each frame and process it that way, which is a, yeah. The process them as uh, they skip frames. Yeah, so that's my guess. So I'm going to type uh, no types and. We'll find something really interesting here. This is the overlay you're making. I think I saw this, but it's looking updated. Yeah, I think it had different uh, earlier version numbers. Didn't they used to have more uh, pictures here? Or am I recalling a different... I think... Uh, transparency, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, th yeah, I remember a different, uh, like, a lot more heads like this here. Um, maybe my memory is wrong. But I think I, I see what you mean. So, question to you and to other viewers. Did you know that there are different types of snow? That's why sometimes it looks like it's uh, snowing uh, like it's sort of Christmas card. 
Sometimes it snows like um, can't get out of the house. Scary looking snow because they have different shapes. Now, uh, maybe I'm not gonna go that much crazy. Shape that shape may, will will be right here. I think. Where is it? This, this, it's where I, um, this is, yeah, draw passes. This is, uh, what, what is, uh, drawn. So apparently, uh, there's a, this. This may have started off as a sphere and the radius and height is uh, butchered. Yeah, it is a sphere. So let's say sit here and pull to catch up. There's a seed professor that is expert on seed professor. A swid, uh, I see swid professor, yeah. Yeah, um, I think NASA did some something crazy like a uh, weather uh so rain uh, machine or something like i i remember seeing a video of it cloud generation machine and then they let it rain something i actually find the short video it kind of looked like a the rocket launching a bunch of vapor and then it started to rain right where the cloud was for a few minutes it feels sure rain clouds this was an interesting thing and, and i when i was watching that video i also heard what you said uh about uh different shapes and like crystals and such being able to create different shapes Let's just look at this for uh, curiosity. We could totally do this. We could totally do this. Here's the temperature. We we do have temperature in the game. Super saturation. How can we simulate this? It's the weight uh, this is density this is weight over volume this is density so let's uh let's brainstorm if it's dense and low temperature So for this temperature, it's less dense like this, denser they tend to be dendrites. You learned about them, it's just no nerd. It's just a, uh, ah, it's a Veritasium uh, video. So I'll actually watch this uh, some other time, but uh, cool to uh, find things like that. Just a nod to the viewers, go find out about the snowflakes. Not the annoying kinds, real snowflakes. So, needles. So, let's say at the same uh, saturation level, the temperature is rising. Oh, no, 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 I was reading this the wrong way. Dude. Okay, whoever made this graph. They should go uh, take some plus. Going right, the temperature should be rising. Because when I was interpreting in the first place, it didn't make sense to me in my mind. Now I, I know why. Okay, this now checks out based on this fucking scale. 
Let's reinterpret it again. Going right, the temperatures are cooling off. Okay. So, for the same density, as it gets cooler and cooler, that's how we are supposed to interpret this. Because as it gets cooler, I was, by logic, expecting things to get more and more crystallized and bigger. But checks out. Which kind of, it, at the beginning, didn't really, like, that expectation didn't coincide with this uh, reading. The Fahrenheit is stupid. I'm not even getting into that. That's a whole other, like, level of madness. Americans, I'm looking at you. You are one of the three countries in the world that is still using it. And the other two countries, I'm going to say something politically incorrect, but they are not really that significant in the world politics. So it's really only America, let's say. Um, yeah, the temperatures are here dropping. Okay. This would have been maybe reversed, but anyway. So there's also this saturation line. This is an interesting case here too because um, let's say in Canada when we have minus 20, 25, 30, we really do have those things. like this. Um, we are pretty much here. So we could create these shapes, and we could uh, we could have a cylinder. We could create an hexagonal this hexagonal cylinder or prism, and it's about the height. Uh, these three are pretty much the same thing. This is the radius is larger; it's wider. Similar idea. And then just above this line, the general shape is this uh, typical snowflake shape, large or not. Will be a performance it like maybe yeah. So that so th this is maybe okay, like I'll simulate one or two cases here, and the reason why. We already have something like this. Now, I've been thinking... So it's whiter. Um, let's open... Ah, that's the catch. This is part of the snow particle. I cannot have this selected in this interface. But I cannot really clearly see it against this okay surface. Um... So I think the reason why I'm actually I might be able to see the difference. That's why I'm discussing this. When the camera is close enough, you get to see this circle here. Let's change this shape to uh, prism mesh like this. So we will get to see it. Like this is huge, mind you, but. <laughs> Just the cube has five. Yeah, we won't see the bottom face. But say this one. And then let's make this uh, polar, like say four. This one is one. Uh, I'm just exaggerating it here, like zero, five. Even uh, less. Reason why I'm saying is like okay, this here. I mean, this is really exaggerated, but it's this. 
needles. This is spear, but get the idea. I see you. You want to go with the billboard, so it's always facing. You know. Yeah, but eventually you 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 want to see some volume, or I don't know, like if that's actually preferable. I think it would be nice to feel that volume uh, feel billboard. I get what you're saying. It has performance gains. Can't get much snow on screen if you use particles like that. I'm not sure why you made that claim. Cannot get much snow on screen if you are you. Why not? It's actually a sh just shaded, like I'm. So you can show as many particles. Maybe what you mean is that aesthetically it's not going to look pleasing. Most likely end up with spice and no shadow. Hmm. Let's try a few things here to uh, see. Uh, by the way, this is uh, as So those units go. I think this should be a Even that is actually huge because this is actually nine cent. Uh, sorry, this. the thing is um, when it's flat like this or sort of skinny, uh, it usually uh, snows fast. Uh, sort of not as fast as rain but it's sort of spiky snow like goes down really fast faster than the, the puffy kind which is now in uh, it's about this uh, velocity to uh, aberration there yeah so we'll uh, have some presets here see this looks cool to me because this is something I'm used to seeing in uh, my like Toronto a room for some nice minutes But see, the, the feeling is different now. This I made a spiky shape, and it's coming down fast. Now I will uh, switch to a rounder shape with a s slower speed, which will uh, which will look like clumps of flakes. That's what you are uh, referring to. This sort of more uh, you have that calm effect. Let's say popcorn and watch a movie. It's snowing out there, kind of. Cozy feeling. Why did I have to personalize it like that? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, another person to ban. Speed would be related to density, really. Now, let me think about my weather data. I do have snow. Uh, I think accumulation, I collected that data I have wind speed wind direction I have humidity
you know super situation i bet this is uh calculated according to some formula question is whether this is actually we could do this with i think with the tools that i have yeah the, the i want to simulate as real as possible even here so that's why i'm i'm okay with the shapes being different in fact we should we could have that now let's look at this and again uh the uh imperial measurements cubic foot let's say it's cubic meter for the enlightened pounds is kilogram it's not but let's say it's weight over volume it's density how can i know that in my case i don't do i can i budget In those uh, records, they skip some of the fields, but they were talking about uh, conditions. I I do have yes humidity, which is not part of this. Uh, scale or guide. I do have temperature. I have something similar to this, but they were not recorded for each weather station. I think my best guess is I'm going to look at uh, how much snow is accumulated. In some of those records, there are some fine details. And I'm going to assume um, the density is going to define uh, one of these shapes. It's like, okay, is it fluffy snow? Is it... Uh, like it honestly makes a difference when when I look outside and uh, the feeling is different. Kind of need a bit more, uh, something a bit more scientific, something like this, but a bit more. Okay, so here's another interpretation. This is actually uh, making a bit more humidity. Yeah, we are, we do have humidity uh, actually. Good uh, starting point. Okay, this is actually done uh, according to humidity. They took the same graphic. They cut off this bottom part, or they are hiding the Fahrenheit part. They uh, swapped the super. Uh, yeah, super saturation. This is actually density. They replaced it with higher humidity. I don't think that's actually scientifically correct, but could uh, just say fuck it. So we could have some kind of mapping and maybe I will uh, narrow these three into just one case. So between these two temperatures below a certain level, all these three are converging to one shape, which is this prism. This is more cylindrical, elongated, and we'll have maybe a uh, because this is a mesh in Godot, like it could be a mesh like, uh, what is it? This is one of the default uh, meshes. I could uh, load my own mesh. I could have any shape I want. Oh, that's the beautiful part. So I could have a mesh that actually looks uh, pointy uh, hexagonal like this this one is more uh, square like ends here I could have one type second type this is just an enlarged version of this and then 
this is essentially this uh, height diminished. So one, two, three. And these are just variations. I'm not going to go into this sort of uh, indented part. And then this is really like sort of the fourth main type. So with four types, we could do this. Surprise is technically a mesh. Just a quad, yes. Yes. But this is a 3D particle system, so we need a 3D... Uh... Now, we do have 2D particle system in Godot. Yes. Yeah, this is truly going to use mission as uh, sprites, but uh, not going to do that for obvious reasons. Because I think that belongs here. So this is actually interesting. Let me see. Uh, how are we going to define these values? Because here is what, what might actually happen. Let's run this game. We do have right now temperature and humidity. I already have that information. We could easily um, swap the model for the snow particle to have something like 3D, 2D would be for 2D. Yeah, it is. However, in Godot, you could actually use. I'm going to make the stupidest sentence ever. Both in both cases. So you could use 2D particles in 3D and 3D particles in 2D. It gets rendered depending on the camera and occlusion and such. But I don't think that that uh, billboard aspect will will give it will give it that uh, realistic 3D depth uh, feeling, which I'm actually after. I think the 2D system works with the billboarding. This one doesn't, by default. This is the 3D particle system. There's also Particles 2D. Let's see. Open a new... Uh... Yeah, this works with uh, Atlas textures as well. Let's uh, look for that board. You said billboard, right? There's no billboard here. Uh, yeah, but I'm pretty sure uh, it does that uh, internally anyway. I think at this point, performance is uh, not my. We may have to be concerned about this, but uh, my general philosophy is usually until it's required and when it's not obvious to you, can I phrase it properly? Sometimes it's too early to, to concern yourself with performance. So let's get the work done, worry about the performance. So, what is the threshold here?
Okay, they didn't actually describe the thresholds. They commit, they removed it, relabeled it. So a good question might be, is this graph correct? Or is this graph correct? Which one is correct? Could make a mixed particle system one further away in higher detail. I might have to do that for a different reason. If performance is an issue, they have to introduce what you are suggesting. But the reason why I'm saying I might have to do the multiple particles is uh, I'm not 100% sure with one particle system. I could uh, simulate all these three effects. Before snow could approach put it it's as if higher up snow here is affected by the wind. It's clearly snow blown in a certain direction. That feels like a separate particles. And there is the occasional turbulence here and some stuff. If there are particles blown this way, you cannot have this sort of stuff. And also, this is a surface that is part of the game world. You cannot really place particles, like particles, object everywhere over each surface. So this may have to be done with its own shader. And then there is the second uh, particles that is simulating just the stuff that is coming down. That is no longer affected by the wind, but just gravity. Um, so yeah, particles, uh, it's with the uh, shader. Yeah, so that's why I actually broke it down to two uh, sections here. There is the particle system, so this section, let's say this is part. And then this is shaders. And I'm thinking now, when I first thought this might actually need uh, three different particles, we might have to be, we might have to just be fine with the two two particles. One, the wind particles, one sort of falling down particles. And this is uh, going to be maybe shader work because I'm going to have to do the shader work for the accumulation anyway. Uh, Matt is. Uh, Okay, it's welcome. Any day, math is okay. I don't think I can ask my dad to help me out, but uh, let's say I'm genetically uh, uh, what's the right word? Uh, my my father is a mathematics teacher, so let's say. Uh, I'll be okay with it. <laughs> it's mad I can learn it. What I usually need is a uh, well-defined formation, well-written, documented. The rest is... Uh, we'll get it done. No classification. Okay, so let's uh, find something that is.
Maybe instead of images, look at uh, documents. Yeah, this is what I was uh, suspecting anyway. It's too cold for a super cool water table. We're gonna head off to find something to eat. Yeah, I'm gonna eat soon too, so uh, enjoy your food. We will uh, catch up again. Have a great Friday. So, let me look at my data. This is just the summary. What I need is that uh, big document. The IST format document. What I need is this. It's pages. Let's look for snow. Ooh, snowflakes. This is, I think, what I remember. Yeah. They, uh, was this uh, identifier? Field length two. This says uh, MWs. I'm not sure if every weather station reported MW. Let's uh, look at. Um, And during the folder structuring, I deleted the uh, MIDI data. So there has to be a folder here. Let's grab it. Let's uh, open this in uh, code. And uh, That's interesting. Okay. So it's no longer available. Let's look at our um, groups here, resources, data, geography matters, uh, collect, see the data i must have written this so let's open the console and say i type this and uh, i collect toronto of course if you type that right now in urban form for urban farmer folder nothing is going to happen so you gotta go in resources data geography matters and now we'll type this. So we'll pull the data. And Toronto is now here. They've been. And. Uh, 
Oh, you expect it to have a folder. But I'm trying, I'm asking you to make the folder. Yet you don't give a nerve. Something didn't look right. Okay, I think I'm going to manually create that folder, which kind of doesn't make sense. The whole idea of the node to create this directory is so that it would be created. But I think it creates this, assuming this exists. Node is weird sometimes. I'm not really missing my JavaScript days. Neither enjoying writing JavaScript anymore. Yeah, it did it. Uh, because some years were missing that's what I and mean, this is a bit of a problem anyway no it's okay it's finished it if I recall we could also uh, take Tokyo in Tokyo has everything and we did Istanbul and Bangkok so uh, I think it's time for dinner and then I will be collecting more of these cities after the dinner break and then we'll look at the uh, MW1 to 6 or 7 fields and see if we can figure out whether the snow density could be deduced from the data or not. We'll see. So see you after the dinner break.
Let's continue. Um, so the discovery phase we are going through right now is for determining the types of snow. Apparently, well, temperature is playing a role in this. Turn on the background music. Another thing that is uh, out there, which is confusing though, is uh, density. Uh, but this same graph is uh, used with, with a different uh, label here, uh, humidity. They can't be both correct, so someone uh, made a mistake. Clearly. So let's uh, keep looking. Just need to understand basics uh, of it, whether it's depending on humidity then that would make our lives easier now, I was also collecting uh, city data right to look at uh, MW1 release that's still collecting it I need something a bit more scientific. This might help. It's uh, still collecting. Okay. Yeah, I wish uh, they uh, give this info. Okay, so stellar plates. Um, we talked about this as like sort of flat edges, right? Spiky parts. And then there's this sort of spiky parts that is more uh, triangular. Worst case scenario, we will group all of this under this sort of, as long as it's sort of six, uh, you know, the typical snowflake shape, that's fine. We figured out the needles. Uh, let's look at the degrees minus five. Because this one has. So as it gets colder, we have the spikes. This is actually. Let's see, it doesn't make sense. It's not just temperature because we saw that. So. Depending on two factors, we can we don't know what that second factor is. Just need the hard data, really. Okay. It says humidity. Okay, largest photogenic stellar snow crystals only grow in a narrow temperature range around between minus 10, minus 20. We have th this 
plate formation and the plate is getting more ornate and more and more designs or patterns are appearing eventually this simple plate is turning into kind of like a table decoration like this okay according to this graph that's happening when the temperature is pretty much in this range but the humidity is rising up okay now of course this is a stupid graphic for two reasons one is um you go right which should normally be rising because it's usually how people read charts instead temperatures are going down That's fucked up miss level one level two is yes you say how your humidity as you go up where are the units so this is zero what is this but there is no number there is no unit You can also see that more elaborate branch crystals grow when the humidity is high. That's exactly what I was just saying. Simple prisms grow when the humidity is low. Exactly why snow crystals grow this way is not. Ah, uh, so. So then the question is. Between these two temperatures, we have column formation columns again here we have plates formation so uh, we could consider these two cases as plates formation except these plates are larger so we could uh, figure that out and here we could uh, stick with some kind of like 50 50 C. we still have to figure out the uh, value here So what I need is humidity, which is not part of this document. Let's see, Istanbul is done. Um, pick another city, London. It's four oh four, which means uh, London. Interestingly enough, So London was not part of that document, which is interesting. It is over 1 million with a nearby station. So I guess it couldn't find a station because it, London has more than one people. Let me uh, open this document. This one. Cities over one million. This one. We do know Toronto is here. London apparently is not here. In fact, it's here. But... Five. North of is the station name. 
here's the data path. For some reason, it couldn't fetch it. Wow. So this is the code. Oh, by the way, just because I have this construct, it doesn't mean Yeah, this weather station might be wrong. The weather station exists, but the data for that weather station that it does. It only start okay, it starts with zero. That's not nice. Because now do we have to add another arbitrary zero at the beginning? Why? We didn't do that for Toronto, which was hundred and five by the way. Uh, this is six digits, that's why uh, we didn't have. So, I bet it's the same case for Istanbul. Yeah, and uh, I did Tokyo, and I bet that's six digit too. You to Tokyo? Tokyo. 395 yes so it's the usaf number okay so we have to pet it this one uh, i think also suffered from the same thing too because i can't imagine also not although i guess uh also unless there's a typo In, in one of those documents, they, I think, wrote Oslo with uh, some... I can't remember. There was a umlaut. Norway might. What's the population of Oslo? Okay, I guess uh, one million. Yeah, is a little bit uh, right on edge. The on the edge there. Okay, I guess this uh, sort of fell through the cracks. Like it's just around the threshold, so it didn't make uh, its way into our file i bet if you look at the um, 500 or 750k we'll uh, find it that's kind of uh worst case scenario 5k 500k yeah seven uh 23 Oslo. So, if we want to create more DLCs, maybe we'll go with uh, 500k cities, then we'll include Oslo. Nevertheless, we now know that we have to pad the uh, USAF notation there, which is, uh, let's see, sanitize URL1 is the code. So, we have to pad this. change the tuner
we have to pad this. Um, so replace this with empty. Oh, something else is giving this URL. The URL is not constructed. CD is over 1 million with a nearby station. That is uh, not built correctly. Uh, CD is over... CD is by country. This is uh, CD is by country. There's a separate uh, structure, prepare candidate cities, there you go. Uh, cities over blah blah with a nearby station. The data that is written into this, this is the weather station uh, USAF, this has to be padded. Uh, Um, Brain is too tired to do this right now, so I'm going to um, either be fine with uh, three CDs. I'll be fine with three CDs for today. Let's look at Istanbul. Uh, 2010. We want to open this with Excel. What we are looking for is MW1 value. Empty mostly. Eighty and ninety-five. So according to this, January first, two thousand ten. I think that's still January first, right? Sixty-eight. Uh. January 2nd, 4 in the morning, 4 to in the morning. So they had snow showers, it's light. But this is not going to give us uh, the density we are looking for, understanding this uh, diagram. So we need uh, snow uh, type. Temperature Good old Wikipedia maybe will help us with some directions. Okay, moisture conditions. This is good. Not that every single thing that is written in Wikipedia is correct, but it usually is correct. And uh, most of the time I have seen that diagram with humidity, which is moisture. This is repeated here. Except that's fallacy by popularity. If you think uh, most people are doing it, is it right? What we can do is, whether this guy has written a paper or not. Um, oh, those.
maybe there is going to be some uh, calculator for us some something i'll reverse engineer yeah dude has written it in 54. Oops. Here's the book. If you want to spend this much money, it could be yours. Okay, I'm under more impression that this is humidity, which is good. Because he simulated this in his uh, laboratory. If that's the case, this uh, thing, this kind of thing, which they said uh, density doesn't make sense because uh, he's not going to, uh, he's measuring the formation there, right? He's not simulating uh, the amount of snow that is coming down so he's adjusting the temperature and the humidity in the environment to see what kind of crystals would form then he's basically saying okay these are the shapes that you'll see snowing so that's good news for us now uh, what I need to know is the value of humidity. So I can make a better judgment. This is wrong. Let me collect this somewhere be it relevant weather Uh, 
Um, I don't need the image, I need the document. Let me check this. How does humidity affect the snowflake? Everybody talks about it. Nobody. Uh, Gives the scientific value. It's just a rehash of uh, an idea. Fairly low relative humidity. Yes, the other one talked about it too, but how low? This is dew temperature or dew point. Okay. The temperature is around blah blah. You need a fairly low, less than about 40%. So should I uh, assume some Oh. Since humidity is calculated based on dew point. This might be it. need a chart or some number like something but there's wet bulb I do have this. And we already have uh, a calculator that gives out relative humidity based on TA and TD, which is uh, TD is the dew point and TA is the air temperature. This is just 
reverse equation. Anyway, so we are kind of done with that. What we need to figure out is the relationship between this dew point and through dew point we could also assume relative humidity and the snowflake formation. Skipping to the relevant parts. Still not about the shapes. Yeah, this is a different uh, study. This is about uh, snow, whether it's snowing or not. Uh, so this is not okay. Let's uh, look for humidity word. Yeah, I just need values here. We consider this hundred percent. They said like low forty percent. Okay, let's assume like this. So let's write down the cases. Let's pull up a notepad. It's, uh, there's nothing underneath here. So we have one case, which is needles. That's clear. Then we have... Uh, no one is going to distinguish the difference between uh, hollow columns and solid prisms so we will uh, we will um, call it uh, prism by prism we actually mean a hexagonal prism okay that's another distinct shape now this actually looks like another prism but it's plate. It has a lower 
thickness or height, if you consider this height. Actually, the prism, but flatter. Okay. And this is a separate shape. This is like a. I will call it flake. I think I will call it spiky flake. This is the spiky flake. This is the flat flake. Dull flake. Um, because thickness wise, like this is how it evolves in my. It starts with this as the humidity is uh, going up. It starts to take more and more complex shapes. So we will consider this as this, but we cannot really consider this as a thin plate. This is sort of a specialized case. And I think uh, in this area, there's uh, enough values in the humidity scale that beyond this uh, threshold, this one deserves to have its own uh, okay. one model, second model. Combine these two into uh, what I will call plate. Okay. So a column is essentially uh, a plate that actually has a higher, more height value. Stretch this. To this and needles is kind of a dead case kind of dead case but it's cylindrical and so so thinner this is a smaller version of this this is a smaller version of this so we have to just map them to certain thresholds and could write code about this you know code for this Smaller than this, smaller than this. These two are the same. These two are basically plate. The smaller, bigger here. So that's done. So this category is done. This is done. Take the spiky, merge the spiky. Okay. This is never formed in, uh, like, never. Actually, this has its own name there that I, I'm. I don't need to invent names. Dendrite. This is dendrite. This one is a uh, stellar plate. Thin plate. And uh, I will call the other ones tall plate. They're all hexagonal. And then there's needles. So okay, thin plates, filler plates, dendrite. Then you have the tall plate with varying uh, sort of sizes. Fine, you could combine them into one. And then this is just another thing. This exists as two sizes. This one. Two sizes, depending on where it is in the humidity scale. And this case is When it gets this cold, things get interesting, and there's never enough humidity to help the formation of this. So that they were talking about a term there uh, about saturation. Yeah. So 
so this is then what I'll do. Um, I will assume this, the same condition as this, which fits into this sort of, between these two values of humidity in this temperature. And then here I will assume that area and anything above. So even if you have higher, uh, which is unlikely, so you won't have high uh, humidity in uh, this sort of temperature. But as far as data goes, cover the edge cases. So in this section, anything above this level is columns, which is going to be a uh, whole plate, just like this. You could call it column too, I don't care, it's stellar plate, but it's the tall plate. And anything below that is just normal stellar. Uh, no, no, I'm wrong, thin plate, this is thin plate, or solid plate, whatever. So what we need to do here for now is uh, we need to take this graphic, need to color code this, go to fireworks, maybe I should do this in Figma. I actually meant this. <sighs> I meant a new file here. Yeah, do it. Yep. So, uh, go zero zero. Lock it. So what I need is something like uh, need zones like this. So do some transparency. Some red color like that. So. Let's be even more anal about it. So that's 590, okay? Because anal is the name of... Take this. There, right? So 200 over 590 is uh, pretty much one third, right? Uh, a little bit less than one third, so it's 30 percent. So this is 70 percent. And that's why they were talking about 40 percent in the other case. I bet this is going to be another. Uh, kind of. This over uh, 590, 32%. Might be wrong about these fields. So let me uh, be a bit more precise. This is uh, not the same distance. So 200 and 200 over 5. 34, so it's 66. Uh, okay. Which leaves us um, 
between 32 and 66 we have 34 34 percent of um, 590 is 200 so the diff so distance between these two areas should be 200 it's pretty much this let's pick a different color because this will nicely fit in between with one pixel off and there is the bottom alignment upper alignment that kind of thing i'm not going to bother because this was always a little bit uh there it so it's divided into third there okay we could uh, get away with that 33 percent 66 percent anything in between is this so so that's good enough you here and let's take these two put you here so in this area we'll go with the smaller dendrites I will uh, I will uh, Define those areas. This is the larger dendrites. For uh, simplicity's sake, simplicity's sake, I'm going to assume uh, this guy is not approaching this top area. That we could actually be a bit more uh, lenient about this. Say hey, this is seventy percent. I'm sort of writing the if-else conditions in my mind. But we'll continue with the visualization of this uh, if-else after I grab T.
Let's have some kind of legend here. Most things we do, this is going to be legendary too. Let's have some text. This red is for dendrites. Okay. This is going to be maybe 60 or 70 double. Okay. So when I have a redder, darker red color, this is uh, talking about either the height change or the the uh, width change. So this is a larger formation than this one. Maybe we'll double the model size, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> now this is for dendrites. Let's pick some uh, other arbitrary color. And uh, so we did this. Uh, let's do the stellar plate. Stel stellar plate is pretty much like solid plates, except that uh, <clears throat> they are much more uh, ornate in plate but it's still make them green like that uh let's sort of half it when we half it it's kind of comes to 50 percent So let's write, write some cases here. So for the dendrites, let's say large dendrites. Okay, the case is I'm going to put a tab here. Maybe I'll do some uh, regular expression for many. Uh, humidity is going to be above. Uh, 70%. This one have a proper scale here. Let me see. Because I'm doing everything. Uh, <clears throat> as closely measured as it can be. So this is 590. If I'm going to measure. Okay, that's definitely 590. You need those lines. So then, this line here is... Ah, see, it's a mistake to... Okay, this is 172, or... So that's 20... Nine, it's 71%. Oh, okay. And the temperature is uh, between minus 10. I'm going to put it as like this, minus 10, minus 20. Okay. Uh, which is not correct. Because this is most likely minus 22. <clears throat> so smart enough. So with the uh, large dendrites, we are done. Let's do small dendrites. This one is... Uh, actually, I'm going to write it like this too. Anything in this range, humidity-wise, is this. And anything in uh, 34, inclusive, right? We'll, we'll talk about that. 33 is whether uh, it's okay or not. So let's do 33. It's 66. Okay. We are uh, including those numbers. <laughs> uh, 
then it's going to be between zero and minus uh, three. So we are now done with dendrites. Let's look at uh, plates. Large stellar. I'm going to call them stellar instead of stellar plate, large and small. Large stellar. This guy is in range of 71, the upper zone. This is what we need to cut. Temperature is the same as the large dendrites. Hey, Luca. How are you? So I'm calculating, uh, well, I'm figuring out a way to change the particle model in uh, Godot. When you work with particles, you could assign the shape of the particle. It's a model. So we could go with the basic shapes, but you could also assign your own model. Uh, since we are doing that for different uh, types of snow, I think I have it here. Did I enable it? Right there. So this is more uh, spiky snow. Yeah, we did a few uh, tests. And uh, sometimes it is going to look fluffier, that kind of thing. And instead of going at it arbitrarily, why not uh, have it based on uh, scientific data? So that's what I'm trying to map out, so I can write the if-else conditions in Godot. Meanwhile, I'm also banning a lot of people in the chat because they're uh, spamming it with a lot of useless... Uh, Probably corrupt URLs. Okay. So a good question will be what happens here? I think we should extend this all the way. Uh, small dendrites. It's about humidity. It should be uh, So we'll consider it like this. This is kind of a weird zone here. Uh, think of this as a diagonal case. We'll see. Maybe I'll create a kind of a weird uh, case here. Or I may have a cutoff point here that I'll split this guy. So where was I? So large dendrites done. 2100 range is fine. Small dendrites done. This third zone is large stellar. I need to figure out this uh, lower end, which is uh, 152 over. Uh, 590 is uh, 26% and then the upper range is uh, let me close this uh, document it's fluctuating my uh, it's doing some funky stuff in there it's 
large stellar. 71 is the upper range, minus 25, which is uh, 45. Okay, we could either go about this 44 or 45, depending on 25 or 26. <clears throat> <clears throat> 45 is a rounder number let's uh, stick with 45 then uh, <coughs> we are still doing the plates or plate this is kind of a unique case because there is no other stellar plate everything else is just a normal plate so I will pick a different color like this this is just a plate so let's uh, copy this start with this now there's obviously um, size difference here Kind of need more categories so 97 over 590 16% this is 33 16 to uh, I will consider this as a sort of like in between to another round here 12% is, uh, is that. I'm making another judgment call here. Looking at the proportions, this one, this one, and these two are the same. If anything, this is more uh, the camera is facing up. This is more uh, flatter. Perspective wise, I will consider these four the same animal. This is uh, in terms of size, size number one, size number two, 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 size number three. It's the same plate, different sizes. Okay, the reason why I'm doing that is because I think I'm going to stay away from this format. I'm going to flip it around, I'm going to start with the temperature. And then under temperature sort of if case then we'll go with the humidity and then we'll assign uh, like an enum milieu right size and whatever model uh okay so that's decision number one when it comes to plates <clears throat> which covers this plates so this is actually three sizes. Dendrites is two sizes. That's already covered. We kind of conceptually covered this. Stellar plate is already covered. This one, sorry. Needles, again, is its own animal. We just have to write the proper case. So I'm assuming that's also done decision-wise. Tall plate, which is this. We'll call them columns. So we stay away from plate business um, 
Okay. And um, because I want to keep things single word, I'm just going to call this stellar done. And uh, there is no uh, thin or long plate, just plate, three sizes. And column is again. Uh, um, I don't think there is, well, there's marginal differences here. But these two are definitely the same. Maybe I'll go with uh, one size and then second size. I'll ignore this guy. Yeah, I'll have it sort of like cut off in the middle. Okay, this is actually even smaller than this. Uh, we'll ignore it. This is just too much work. Okay, how can we write this in a meaningful uh, if else way, uh, data structure way, JSON, Godot resource? Kind of need a mapping done. some weird reason binary tree is coming to my mind the difficulty i'm having is combining two binary trees also about ranges Okay, let's write the dumb uh, version of this. Maybe it's still here. Temperature wise, right. say, uh, let's start with the zero. We have four ranges. We have a zero minus three range. Something happens under this. Uh, we have the humidity cases. Let's define the humidity. We said 16% and then another 17% here, right? No, 12%. Let's round it up to 13%, so proper 20% range here. If the humidity is between this and uh, this, then it's... Uh, okay. Okay. Writing like this. Then it's uh, plate. Size one, plate one. I'll call it plate one, like this, size wise. It's uh, 13, uh, well, we have less than equal, that kind of thing. Okay, 33, plate two. Then we have 33 to 100. Then we have uh, 
let's call it dendrite one if we are going with this uh, one two as the size <coughs> suffix it's dendrite one it's this motherfucker so now we are done with the zero minus three now because this is a stupid notation it should be like this Then we do uh, minus uh, 10 to minus 3. This she needs to take this. Then we could still use the same range, humidity, 0 to 13. Uh, we do have, uh, we'll call it column. Column 1. And uh, let's simplify our lives here again. This is, we'll assume this is the same structure. This is going to be column two, and this is going to be needles. Okay, shamelessly copy between uh, minus 22 and 10, minus 10. Because this is smaller, higher, so let's stick with that low, high aspect. Now this plate is uh, number two, just like this one it here uh, except the, the uh, humidity range here is different so this is uh, in between so I'll call this 17% because I'm eyeballing it there well stop bullshitting 128 22% Do I shouldn't eyeball it or bullshit it This was 45% That doesn't look 45% I'll arbitrarily stretch this 366 It was 45%. So then this will be 2245, which is uh, plate number three. And 45 to 70, that's what we wrote here. In fact, we did it at 71. It's the stellar. We do have a fourth case where it's 71 to 100, which is uh, dendrites number two. Finally, we'll have three cases here, so let's go to this one. From uh, there is really no minimum. There is a minimum temperature in uh, in our data set, which is I think 95. Let's call it 90. Goes all the way down to or up to minus 20. So these two are the same. Let's. Uh, do it this way, sort of halfway. 169 over 590, 28% is uh, plate one. It's not correct, it's plate two. These two 
and this this are played too. We need H to there is no upper limit, right? It's a uh, column two. There's a slight. Uh, this is this looks slightly bigger than this. We are assuming they are the same size. This is column one. We never use column two except uh, here. But this was column one. Okay, this is fine. And we'll ignore this one. Uh, we could if you wanted, but uh, it's too fragmented there. I think this covers it. And I think right there we have the if this is written. So we could do something like uh, let's go to our weather and auto load. Singleton's weather, 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 or weather. Um, there was another weather, which is the system. This is kind of the weird stuff. I think everything will eventually come under this. This is what we are after. Now, this has uh, some denormalized decode and all that other stuff. Uh, some of this will have to be maybe... Uh, move to a generic utility function this is uh encoding and decoding an image file that holds uh weather data which is uh it's an interesting concept uh started off in the last few months find the file data this file so this is the data for 2010 Toronto it has all the rain wind snow everything is here which is essentially this so now based on this humidity and temperature um we will do this there are some bullshit functions here so i will So relative humidity and such so let's write a basic uh by the you know um do we already have an enum section here uh no type okay let's uh take some of these new You have plates. Can we do dashes? Maybe we can. No. I didn't think so. But we could do this though. Right? Yes, we could do that. So we, we have those plates. We do have Stellar. And we do have Dendrites. We call it Dendrites, but Dendrite is fine. Dendrite also comes in two uh, sizes. And then we have Column. One and two.
And then finally we have needles. Needles, one column, we actually made it two sizes in the end. Filler is one. Uh, it's, uh, Sounds correct to me. It's this one. Okay. So uh, we need a function. Just get a snow type. Something like that. So this needs to know the temperature. There is actually a temperature. That's the problem. We need to find the temperature for the existing app. And I think I was going to do some kind of a correction here <laughs> because these were uh, 10 scaled. So this actually is 19 degrees, but it actually, uh, only right now it looks 190. Because this, when you get the measurement for... Not everything that is measured and recorded is at the same scale. Some are 10 scale, meaning uh, when you see something like this, you have to divide it by 10. So that's 19 degrees Celsius. If this was 192, it's 19.2 uh, degrees Celsius. Which is interesting because <clears throat> it could be an easy programming mistake. At some point, if you want to check something, if a plant is thirsty or it is too cold, you want to check something like, well, is it below 10 degrees? Now you gotta check if it's below 100 instead of 10 degrees. It might be an easy mistake, but sort of like a convenience to go and you say, get me the temperature, if it's less than 10, you do it. But then, current temperature will be somewhere in the 70s. Although, as far as data logic goes, it is the right case because it's sort of below 100. But if you accidentally checked it against 10, your 70 will be suddenly higher. And then that if condition will fail wrongly, you will think it's a false case. But there's a logical mistake there. So, which means that... Uh, I or someone else has to tell another developer the uh, idiosyncrasies of like temperature checks that is done with the 10 scale or not, which is kind of counterintuitive, right? I'm going to be thinking about whether I'm changing that or I'm moving forward with the current decimal values, but I think I need a short break other than dinner break that I had a while ago. I'll be back soon.
Okay. So this is where I was deciding about the scale factor, right? <clears throat> it's not going to matter much here. Problem with this uh, measurement system is that this is uh, not aware of the scale. Let's go to Visual Studio Code. I thought I had it open. Let's look at those cleaners. Installed. So one of these cleaners is for temperature. Can't remember which one. Look it up. So uh, previous. The beginning of the document search. Um, okay, it could be minus ninety three point two. That's this is the scaling factor. So in here. One of these cleaners, uh, this one, the MP, right? This is the mandatory part. Yeah. Problem though. When I do the math, this is actually 932 in the minimum, right? In max, uh, which is looking data from uh, here. Yeah. So this has to be However, okay, if I'm doing that, then I also have to do the scaling here too. So when I do parse float, I'll do this. Let's see, I have to re-export the data. So what this means is I need to re-export this. Um, Means I have to do a lot of things.
resources data this Toronto 2010 we open this in Excel then we do macros view macros we run this so this is done so now we have this then we go to here we will have to be under resources so this uh, so expand so we need to run it like this last thing though when i did this Yeah, this is still exporting to this folder. And then I had to run the Godot layer where I'm, ex I'm converting the JSON data to image data. Ultimately, though, the value that I would like to get is for uh, was 32% humidity minus 1.2 that kind of thing okay this is January 10th this is not going to change this is going to somewhere here so in the new uh, exported file if we access the same values then we are good resources data geography climate data to run this um, you failed Return macroscopic, yeah, this is it. What are these? of now Thing doesn't it up here? So fine. It 
It's not failing here. I know that because uh, let's see, cleaners GA one actually goes as far down as GA one in here. It processes all this, comes to GA one, fails. because it doesn't find I do remember fixing some of this and now that I reverted everything okay 2010 Zero one zero one eighteen hour. Twenty five. Because in GA one, we actually open it. Find previous healthy value. Bit of now. Seven forty-five. Let's look at uh, twenty-five January. Let's see. Here. And uh, I think this was GA one, right? You? Yeah. So 25, okay, it fails here, but for this to fail here, it should also fail here. That's why I wrote this. This is the name of the min max field. Uh, What's the next empty wheel? Oh, 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 oh. This is sheet uh, one. Should be looking at it here. Same story though. It's not in min max.
So who is uh, also logging this? Might be misleading me. So instead of fixing it, maybe I first read So it doesn't exist, okay. But we do know that. So instead, I'm trying to fix it by saying that look at the records for this particular index. And, uh, well, because we do know that for this index, this doesn't exist, okay? From this index inside this function, it's going to do its own. Uh, one it's a bit of a problem I think I kind of wrote this a bit differently in other Yeah, I uh, forced it to this field. So this is all going to be the same story. Wind gust observation. If it doesn't exist, I said, uh, fuck it, it doesn't exist at speed. Uh, it also is zero. and precipitation which is uh, a whole other index so this is doing forward looking this is also forward looking for snow it's done under a different record AL1 instead of AA1 so these two cases are this is AA1 and AL1. So really, this GA1 is where I thought I had it covered. But it's uh, natural to have this problem. Because <clears throat> when you say go and find the index, well, for this index, there is no healthy value. So find the previous healthy value for this index. This zero here means uh, whether it's uh, because there are split values here. Yield index. Yeah. So when you <coughs> access the previous row, Here's the field. This is GA1. So it actually does this. So here's the row index GA1. So we are here. Row minus 1, GA1 is this. Now split this. And then take the first index, which is 0. 0, 8 here. And uh, compare that to coverage. Well, include its minimum, maximum under. Uh, as far as I know, GA1 was the uh, cloud coverage. Um, sky cover this stuff so yeah it really has um, 0 to 10 parsing it Let's see 
The problem, though, we are uh, facing is we don't even get that far. It's just that here it doesn't find anything to split. You cannot read property split of null. So here's what's happening. Uh, what's the... Can we know how many iterations we have run here? Um, assuming this is still the same problem, right? So all is happening inside this uh, here. So we'll uh, do 25 here. Oh, I think I know exactly why. What's happening? This is kind of like a generic problem, actually. This might happen in other cities, too. Just looking at this value here. You can see the discrepancy. It, I wasn't, uh, it didn't occur to me when it was. So, but here we only care for the exact hours, not uh, in between hours. Problem though, in Istanbul they measure I think every 20 minutes, so we have to make a decision. Uh, in other words, we kind of have to figure out the, or we have to be lenient about the frequency. We assume that this is the frequency one hour. We gotta have a start and end point, and anything in between like this should be discarded. Uh, the problem with this one is, uh, I think this is the GA one, right? ED one. Yeah, this is missing a lot of things. SLP, SLP. Oh, I see. There you go. Which is, uh, Thing is, this actually doesn't care for. Didn't care for uh, in between hours because it's just data. Yeah, this is about data cleaning. I might have manually removed it. Give me situation. Because I think there are a few like this in Toronto. In four. I'm not mistaken. Because let's do the math. Three hundred and sixty-five days times twenty-four. We have this many records. We do have that this, and it's also zero-based. Sorry, one-based here. 
So we do have a few uh, extra ones. Definitely. Okay, so yeah, it really looks like this is the only one where doing this, which is this find previous healthy value. Um, problem is, why is it not? Uh, Uh, this is my attempt to record date split T with zero. Otherwise, Funny thing is, we don't have this many file values. Except this is every single time GA1 is. So based on this, okay. the first row is uh, the header, so plus one. Looking at these two uh, records here, plus two, so 700, um, 8,763, which checks out. So there are only two file records here. However, there are multiple console logs for the same two dates. And that makes sort of sense because uh, it's still processing the remaining records. But Because this is what I can also do here too, like say, this date for uh, which weather elements is weather elements, which is a function reference. 
This is what I mean. So when we run this, you uh We have this sort of file. So it came all the way down to January 3rd, 1645. It tried to process this with it on a forward date. I mean, okay, here. Uh, if you want to optimize this, we say, well, uh, guess what? If this state is not good, then why are you trying to process? The next uh, cleaner or expander for that date. The date is not kosher in it. Should be optimized, but regardless. Since that date exists, this used to be, uh, say, we didn't care for this, right? It's, this used to be like, just go uh, process it no matter what. Let's type it like. It does it. This is when I introduced it. Magnet. So we'll work it out now. Out of this, with the macro, I create this. I processed it with the expander, which created this, and this, and this. Now this has to be put into Godot. This guy. Need to go up resources. This one. Okay. This is just a simulator. We 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 actually converted it. I don't recall whether I bound this to this. I must have because it's a uh, look. Uh, date created. The hour really is fucked up. Date created. Dude. It's not even 735 yet. This checks out. Anyway, it's kind of weird, but it put the date, uh, like the creation date, some like 13 minutes later. What? Anyway, this is checking out. This file is now read here. In here. If you run the game, this is correct. So it was starting 32%, uh, 1.1 ish. Let's run again. Okay, that's correct. Most of all, the temperature is correct. Um, the only thing that it, that we may be wrong about is um, is Humidex needed? We have to fast forward the time. Now, normally above 19 degrees, yeah, we should have Humidex, which means. Uh, This should be replaced with Humidex when it's uh, over 19. This is going to work because uh, whether it's divided by 10 or not, 0 is 0. 
but for the 190 case we have to ch uh, change this to 19 not 190 this should fail uh, because uh, now our measurement is coming as sort of like a correct scale now let's change the date to um summertime the uh day 210 yeah we, we we have this missing and also i think we, i fucked up this too because this is also depending on the temperature clearly this is wrong dew point because when i did all this madness See, uh, minimum maximum due. This should also be uh, totally scaled. It also means I have to go to due, and just like in temperature, I have to. Uh, Um, also relying on this here. Huh. In the case of temperature, I think I never had a problem, but to be to do, uh, I'm auto correcting. But the problem is when you find this value, this is going to return something we are trying to parse here this is slightly different uh, normalized temperature this is actually doing a um, version i just need to divide it by 10 now. i may have to parse float it here I'm not quite sure if it's going to work here. But we changed nothing. Done. We encode it. Done. Run the game. This should be fine. I don't think it's correct. I might be dividing it here. I think this is incorrect. Yes, this is July-ish. Anyway, a quick fix for this problem. This humidex, uh, humidex is there. That's fine. Uh, I'm probably when I'm attaching those values. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm actually doing some monkey business here. Not be there. Um, I haven't fixed the speed yet. Uh, that's the next thing. Uh, this is a separate thing, which may... Uh, it's fine. There you go. Uh, this humidex is apparently wrong. That is also happening before. Because is humidex needed? If it's needed, get humidex, then you don't do this monkey business. This wind chill value will also be uh, this. This is also uh, speed. I haven't done it. Don't touch it. 
and here too um, temperature was corrected that actually crept into so many uh, areas unbelievable The rest is just a uh, definition function calculation. There you go. This is more like it. So the temperature is this. Any, anywhere below 19, nothing is happening. And it's uh, afternoon rising about 19. Then it feels like uh, depending on the humidity. You feel like it's more here. Okay. I think what I'm going to do for uh, today or right now, I'm going to conclude the stream, but just a recap. Um, today started off with the uh, discovery of particles. We did have some discovery the particles we found out that we could change a bunch of properties there is a volume associated with the particles and uh, this volume acts like a Kind of a safety mechanism meaning um, if the camera is viewing this volume which and this volume is normally invisible but it's ray casting if the camera is in in any way uh, detecting this volume and the particle system is automatically turned on or off depending on the case then we put this uh, particle uh, area right about the house and occupying good portion of the neighborhood going to be your we found out that uh, we change the particles shape which is uh, a 3d model which led to the discovery of um, having the sh different shaped models so we mapped this out I haven't implemented this yet, but it's written here. Uh, it's sort of like this is like pseudocode. This is our if and else checks, and depending on these checks, we will assign the right model. And to be able to do this, uh, we had to fix the current uh, temperature scale, which was coming from this uh, original data source. Uh, Kind of like multiplied by 10 so the 19 degrees celsius was marked as 190 so now for the last hour i have converted that uh, kind of uh, 10 scale to proper scale and there's a whole pipeline about that and when i run the game i can confirm that the the x values are indeed sh uh, showing up correctly now, based on the humidity and temperature, we can now uh, move forward shapes. Now, these shapes will be dynamically assigned to the particles system, which will mean that depending on the temperature and humidity, you will be, you will be seeing different uh, types of snow. Like the snowflake shape will be different it might make a difference right now the, the one we have is is the most basic spike shape like we call it needles we actually created a cube uh, made it really thin and long kind of like this but small so i will uh create basic models mostly 
those models for the appropriate case and we'll see if it actually makes any difference so which concludes sort of half done so let's consider this kind of done this is a system So we'll continue tomorrow with this, uh, but for the time being, for uh, Friday night, that's it. Have a good Friday night and see you tomorrow.